So often in life, I feel, having worked with hundreds of patients as a psychotherapist, I feel like people sometimes make decisions based on what they think other people think they should be doing, not actually what they want to do or feel is in their best interests. So my friends, I think you know by now that I'm honored to be sponsored by GQ Legal Specialists. For all your legal needs in Aotearoa, New Zealand, consider GQ. Kia ora te whanau. it's good to see you. So I wanted to touch on some thoughts that I've had following um, myself and Mark watched Marriage Story. And I didn't actually realise it was from 2019. I don't know where I've been. <laughs> Like, I, I only just saw it. I don't know if it only just went on Netflix now or not. But if you haven't seen it, if you have Netflix, it's watchable. You know, that's kind of what we thought. And, um, I mean, it obviously won awards and all sorts. So, you know, a lot of people thought it was very watchable. It's quite long, the movie. And if you haven't seen it and you think you might like to, I'll try and give a summary below so you can sort of get a feel for it, right? But if you do want to watch it, then go ahead and watch it because there's going to be spoilers in this, okay? So please don't ruin the movie if you do want to see it. Put this vlog in one of your playlists and then come back to it, okay? And before you go, remember to like. <laughs> Maybe just leave me a heart so I know that you're going to do that and like a bookmark, right? As a psychotherapist, I felt that they were a very interesting couple. I actually feel like, in general, the movie was really well observed. The characters were well observed. I feel like the actors were really committed to portraying these characters faithfully, even though at several points, I kind of didn't like either of them very much, really. The only person I liked consistently was the, the boy, the son, right? He was adorable, as children are generally. And uh, and certainly his character was really a real sweetheart and very again beautifully acted from the little the little boy really I mean actually of all the actors I would say that he was the one this little child actor was the one that I often forgot that I was watching him act if that makes sense I mean he was brilliant actually I think that any couple married or not but any married couple going through similar issues. You know, there are, and any committed couple, frankly, in, in a long-term relationship, there are three key areas that I felt might have been addressed and saved the relationship. Essentially, I felt like the issues between them were about honesty, about not being honest with each other, about how they really felt about really important areas of their lives and their marriage. And it's almost as though... That was the kind of third element, you know, an unwanted element in their marriage, really, that, that ruined ruined it and ruined them. Is that lack of transparency between them. So that was kind of poignant to me watching it. I mean, obviously, you know, it's just a movie, but knowing that there are probably relationships like that, they're actually fundamentally not completely flawed you know not not really in my view completely broken but just lack that there's a bit of an issue around self-awareness that's true for both of them I would say but but mostly it was about the fact that it seemed like they couldn't tell each other the biggest demons that that were haunting them in the marriage so let's just dive into a few of those areas I think the first one which is kind of obvious is the sex issue the fact that charlie had an affair or a dalliance whatever you want to call it i mean it sounds like it wasn't at all involved in in any respect other than just the physical side but the fact that he did that really and infidelity is a really interesting area of course and really painful in relationships but it seemed so much to me that he did it really just because he was feeling unloved and unwanted. And obviously they were having difficulties. He said at one point that that was the point at which he was sleeping on the couch. So we didn't really get full context around, well, why was he sleeping on the couch? What had gone on? Is it just because they'd 
I don't know, pissed each other off, he snored, she snored. What was the I reason? don't feel like we really got a, an answer about, well, why was he sleeping on the couch in the first place? Or perhaps it was that she'd already discovered that he was having this affair, kicked him out, but just told him that, oh, I don't want to sleep in the same bed as you anymore. I mean, we don't know. The thing that I was struck by was just this idea that had there been more honesty between them, it's possible that, you know, if, the, if she'd have understood the level of frustration and anger he had about not having sex and whatever her resistance and anger and resentment was around not wanting to have sex as well, that could have been talked through. It could have potentially been. Obviously, again, it does depend on where, when the fidelity happened and stuff. And it was sort of ongoing. It was messy. And just in the way that these things can be, it wasn't really clear what was, you know, what that timeline had been. But that was just a thought I had. And certainly, you know, I feel through my clinical experience, I, I, I feel so strongly that often, you know, we have these fantasies in a relationship or about, it can be about another person, you know, that, you know, marriage is forever, forever is a mighty long time, right? So in the course of that time, in terms of our sexual development, of course, things are going to ebb and flow and change and move. And there's going to be all sorts of things that can happen in that arena, both for the individuals and as a couple. It means that really communication is crucial. When I say communication, I don't just mean, you know, date nights, hearts and flowers. It means really kind of gutsy, courageous communication. And that is the disinfectant to any infidelity. If, if that level of honesty is possible between two people, then you know, you can go anywhere really and do anything. It doesn't mean that you just act out. It doesn't mean that they should just, oh, he says, oh, well, I'm fantasizing about having an affair. Okay, go and do it. I'm not saying that's the, the solution, but just that capacity for honesty, that level of honesty is the thing that is so protective. I mentioned this already, the word resentment, right? Resentment, gosh, when we think about that word, what do we think about? Can you think about a job that you had that you absolutely loved? You maybe you loved it when you started, right? And then it, over the years, it ground you down. And even I was reading something, this is just tangential, but interesting in, in how it references how resentment can build from even from love, even from something that is inherently good and that we love and value. It was it was the creative director or he had a role like that. I think it was in within Ralph Lauren, actually. And I, I don't really want to. I mean, this stuff is in the public domain, but it felt very personal what this person was sharing, actually. And he was just saying how it got to a stage where he realized that he spent 30 years at this company. Did I want to spend my entire lifetime, my working life, just doing the same thing? And it was actually quite gracious what this person said, but it spoke to resentment. It spoke to this idea that, you know, I've given my all to you all these years. I mean, all of that was implicit. We didn't say that, but I felt, I, I was just really struck by that really. And I feel like with this relationship in marriage story is a similar thing like, and it, in all marriages, arguably, that's the challenge, isn't it? That, with something that, you know, is so much part of the fabric of your life, there's always the risk that some some small thing that the other person does becomes like snowballs into something that drives you nuts. It's like, oh, I can't take it anymore. I'm, I'm full of resentment over this thing. You always leave your, you know, I don't know, toothbrush on the microwave. I don't know. <laughs> that would be random. <laughs> But you get my point. It's like it, it can be something small that because of the nature, this forever of marriage forever. I mean, obviously, for probably arguably most people, it's not forever anymore. And that's because it's so challenging. Right. That's because marriage is challenging. And that brings us to our final point in a moment. But just staying with us for a second longer. It's my belief that, you know, again, if we can air resentment, if we can bear to hear it, 
you know, if we can bear to, and that goes for friendships as well, you know, if we can bear to disclose, look, I feel really pissed off that you've done this, or I really felt let down when you weren't there for me when I went through whatever, you know, if we can have that level of corridor, that level of conversation, then to my mind, almost everything becomes possible again and everything can be renewed again. So this is why the kind of key word really in, in my thought around what could have salvaged their marriage is honesty. In the case of this particular marriage and marriage story, it was interesting how this sort of came through more towards the end of the movie. And, you know, Charlie, his, the, the guy was saying that, you know, she wanted everything so fast and he felt rushed and pressured and then no doubt more pressured when she became pregnant to kind of marry and do maybe the, I don't know, whatever the fantasy, the American dream fantasy. I don't exactly know. Again, it wasn't explicit what he said, the pressure he felt was, or that she was rushing and wanted everything so quickly. So in other words, it wasn't really an ideal foundation, you could say, for marriage. If he really did feel like that, like, God, I have to, shit, you know, she wants all this stuff and she wants the house. And she, I mean, I don't know what all of that meant because he didn't unpack it. And again, it was very true to life because we don't often, you know, we do often say things and you know that that's that would be in the next episode if it was a soap opera kind of thing the point is so we don't know but it was implied that there was just this sense of urgency before he was ready and that actually I think he even went as far as to say I wouldn't have married you if I'd have if things had been going more slowly right and there were so many scenes like that just really raw emotion where the the real the coin flips so one of the things that is my belief is that so long as we are everyday human beings and we haven't ascended to becoming kind of enlightened beings hopefully we're on the path to that but as long as we're on that path and we haven't achieved it love is just a coin that if you flip it over hate is on the other side right and I think the way we mediate that, the way we avoid just everyone getting divorced, because otherwise we'd fall in love, oh, it's all great. And then two years later, oh, fuck you. you know? <laughs> it's like the way we, we avoid that is through honesty, is through acceptance. And this is kind of my final point. This is just my view. But acceptance of the imperfection, acceptance that, okay, in that case, in this marriage and marriage story, they didn't marry for the best reasons. So what? You know, a lot of people don't. A lot of arranged marriages in cultures where that is still either the norm or it still just happens or whatever. Of course, arranged marriages can be terrible, can be awful if it's, there's any coercion. But, but often, actually what you find is that there's much more longevity in those marriages because there's a kind of and again, I, I don't know anything about that personally, because obviously that's not been my experience. But from my understanding, culturally, and from having an Indian family and imbibing certain awareness and knowledge, it is just what I know. I'm not saying I'm an expert in this field, but it's it's almost like there's an implicit directive that, of course, we're going to have to work at this, because this was something that our families brought us together based often on Vedic astrology, based on real kind of ancient traditional science, not science in the way that the textbooks will say, but it's the science on the less Vedic astrology in my view. So sometimes it's based on that, sometimes it's based on all sorts of things. And obviously if we look back through the ages around marriage and why people married, it's about dynasties, isn't it? It's about joining forces, it's about power and money and all of that stuff. But assuming that it's with that loving two families saying these two would make a good match and they've done some whatever their spiritual due diligence on that there's some foundation there it might not be oh we met at a club and we fell in love and it might not be the western story love story but nonetheless it's valid it can be valid and who's to say it can't be so in this case in the marriage story why not say well okay you didn't really marry, want to marry me at the time, but haven't we built something great? 
we've had a child if, if this was them right it, you know we've, we've brought a new life into the world is that not worth something and I think that's the thing that was really interesting to me by the end of the movie that wasn't super clear I, I don't really feel I mean maybe others will have a different view and I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments do leave me a comment do like and subscribe if you're not already part of the Soul Food Fano but what wasn't clear to me is like I, I just kind of felt like I feel like they sort of still would like to be married, you know, because marriage is so much more than just the obvious things. It's it's building a world together, really, you know. So I felt as though and it was just in and, and you know, maybe it's just more about the fact that, you know, love when it's real is enduring, even when there is hate present, even when things, you know, turn to crap you know so and I think obviously the film was really I felt was very good at homing in on there's a point where they were rowing and she kept calling him honey because that's what you do you know that's what she spent however many years doing so it doesn't just disappear even in rage even in anger or whatever the emotion and I thought that was really um really well well observed um I have to say I wasn't a thousand percent convinced of her acting at all times i feel like scarlett johansson has been better in other movies i mean one of my absolute all-time favorite movies i don't know do you know what my, i don't think you know why don't you just pause the video actually just have a play with me pause the video what's my favorite one of my favorite movies guys i have a few so take a guess <laughs> and actually you might guess and it, if it's not i could watch a lot of you guys kind of have a good insight into the sorts of things that I do enjoy. So have a stab at this. I would be super curious, like what's what's one of my favourite movies? Go on, go ahead and leave a comment. <laughs> Did you leave a comment guys? <laughs> Thanks for playing along. You guys are awesome. So the thing is I, I actually love Scarlett Johansson as an actress. I think she's brilliant. I mean, there is an argument to be made about the fact that she seems to be in everything sometimes and give other people a chance, give other actors a chance, but you know, hey, whatever. I absolutely loved her in Lost in Translation, which is one of my favourite movies. So I thought she was exquisite in that. And I don't know whether, you know, she's just so accomplished now. She's like, ah, whatever. <laughs> you know? I doubt it. No, I'm being a little bit cheeky. She was good, don't get me wrong, guys. And, you know, the story moves along at a really great pace. It has a lot going for it, this movie. So, you know, it's definitely worth a watch. But, yeah, I was struck by, yeah, that I wasn't overwhelmed. Generally, I find her acting to be pretty good, although I haven't seen her in much lately, I have to admit. I don't, we don't watch that many movies, actually, really. Not by most people's standards. Anyway, an aside. <laughs> wouldn't wish that kind of pain on anybody you know the kind that actually Adam Driver was was brilliant conversely I've said that Scarlet Scarlet's acting kind of left me thinking mm, like am I supposed to be really taking this seriously right now there were a couple of moments if I'm being brutally honest with him his acting was pretty pretty flawless and I didn't really like his character that much you know I didn't um, at times I did. He was a great dad to the boy. That always endears people to me if they're great parents. Even in character form, it's so wonderful to see that male role model in a positive light. Not perfect by any means, not at all. Yeah, but he was actually brilliant. He was really, really good, I thought. Really, really consistent. And not always the nice guy, you know, and I, I did appreciate that about both their characters. They were both somewhat self-absorbed, I felt. And again, this is where therapy could be so profoundly useful in that, because as I often say, no one can see the back of their own head. <laughs> I 
And on that note, my dear ones, I want to thank you for watching. Do remember to like this video if you've kind of enjoyed it. If you're going to watch it or if you've seen it, what's your take? You know, do you think that there was any hope for their marriage or do you just think they're better off kind of apart, right? Love to hear your thoughts. You can always share this video if you know of anyone going through a rough patch in their relationship and you feel some of these tips might be useful. It's kind of a gentle format and it's free. It's not therapy, right? So <laughs> no cost involved. But yeah, I do feel like, yeah, I do feel like definitely their marriage wasn't really over in, in many respects. It wasn't like a dead tree. There was still some life in it, but sadly... They didn't have me. <laughs> and on that note, thank you, my dear ones. Thanks for not taking me too seriously all the time. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Kia ora.